Oh, hello, Facebook uh, groups. Not Facebook groups, but hello and welcome to Cast Creations and more. We're going live on Facebook today where we're going to do an everyday welcome wreath. So this design is going to be popular because this is the, these are those wreaths that we put on our door as we transition in between the different holidays. And sometimes we think that a Mother's Day gift should be something like a wreath that is uh, specific to a mom. And in reality, I'm thinking most moms want something that we can put up not just one day or not just for the month, but every day so that we have that reminder every time we see that wreath that um, we are reminded of the love that came through that gift every time we say a wreath. So a um, couple housekeeping items. If you want to save this tutorial, simply click the share button. It takes this tutorial on Facebook and posts it to your Facebook page where you'll have it accessible whenever you're ready to put your own together. YouTube subscribers a little bit different. You're just gonna simply share or not share, save the video and then however you have that set up on your login, your account on YouTube, um, you'll be able to kind of sort through that and save the tutorial. So you don't have to like try to remember out of all the videos on YouTube, which one were you watching? So that makes that super simple. Also, if you want to turn on live notifications and I can use your help on this as well, um, wanna make sure that you're doing two things on the Facebook side of things. We wanna make sure that you have followed the page and that you have liked the page. It was easier when both were readily accessible, like right when you log on to the page, but right next to the follow is three little dots. Click on that dot or click on those dots. It'll open up a sub menu. Then you can either turn notifications on or you can follow the page. It just depends on what changes Facebook has in store for you. And that's how you actually receive notifications for anyone you want to follow on Facebook and be notified uh, when they do go live. YouTube subscribers, super simple. Just subscribe to the channel and you'll get a notification whenever I upload another video. Um, now with this one, let me go ahead and make sure I'm live. I just kicked myself out of my own page just now. Of course, that would be wonderful. Um, okay. Of course, Facebook's just being kind of wonky. Okay, why did you do that? Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. That's interesting. I did not change. I did not change my title. My title says, let's make a peacock wreath. We're actually making an everyday welcome wreath. So, um, there is that. So I apologize for that because that should not have happened. Um, let's go ahead and swipe here. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Pam. Welcome. I'm going to go ahead and put the link to the website, to my website down below. If you guys are ever thinking about making a purchase from me, you get much better prices on the website than you do from my Etsy shop. So... I'm including this. Also, there's a ton of free stuff on my website. There's free tutorials. There is a sign up on my email list and you get my bow making recipe. It's automatically going to send that to you. And then, of course, if you want to purchase this wreath today, it is available on the website. It just won't have a picture of the final design until we are through. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Comment is pinned. We are ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and pivot you down. We'll go through all the materials. Hang tight. I'm always trying to do this. I apologize, Elizabeth. I did not get a chance to change the channel before, or the title before we went live. So this is actually going to be an everyday wreath. So um, with that being said, let's make sure we've evened up everything. So you can see everything. We're using a 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. Um, and I'm just doing all beige pipe cleaners on this design. Um, we're going to be using a sign that you can purchase from Craft Outlet. It's kind of got this rustic wood look, a little bit of the Swiss dot down here at the bottom, but it's definitely an everyday design. This is an 11.75 inch rounded up. It's a 12 inch uh, metal sign. That is going to be our inspiration and sign for this piece. We are going to be using 
a natural and white jute deco mesh, which has to be cut with the rotary cutter. You cannot use a, a wood burning tool on this. It won't cut through those natural jute fibers. So you'll only require one roll for this design. In addition, we are pairing that up with a handful of different ribbons going black, white, and tan. Let me make sure we cover all of these. So, and let you know where they're all from. So the gingham with the wide stripe, that's the two and a half inch. That is from Craft Outlet. The inch and a half black with the white Swiss dots, known as Swiss dot. This is from Fifth Street Studios. The black with the raised white stitching is from Kringle Designs. This black and tan striped is from Craft Outlet. And then the two on the end, the two and a half inch black, tan, and white dotted line. And then the black and tan diagonal plaid are both from Joann's. And I think that was two years ago at Christmas. So those are all the ribbons that were going to be featured in this design. And we are ready to put it together. We're going to start by finishing wiring up our 14 inch wired or Dollar Tree wreath form. Going to simply in each of the six sections, they're all the same. I've done the first five for you. On this one, we're going to take our pipe cleaner, place it directly in the center using those two welds on either side, these here, to kind of find a midway point. It doesn't have to be exact. And then on the outside, what I've been doing lately is I've been measuring from this pipe cleaner to where I would like to put a pipe cleaner and trying to make sure that there's about That way there's three in each section, one on the inside, two to the outside. That leaves you six on the inside, 12 to the outside for a grand total of 18. Now, because we have that 12 inch sign, we are going to be removing the six inside pipe cleaners as we add our deco mesh and go around. We are using, this deco mesh is actually 10 and a half inches. And we are doing 20 inch pieces. We are doing the ruffle technique. Now the ruffle technique just means because we have such a big sign taking up the center space, if we wanted to do cruffles, if we wanted to do curls, we're gonna be fighting those curls as we're trying to place our ribbon or place our bow. So I prefer on a larger sign to do a ruffle method, especially if you're gonna be adding embellishments or a bow. So we're going to be rolling or uh, curling this up against the natural curve. I just find that if you put a weighted object on the end, it just makes it easier so it doesn't keep trying to curl up on you, especially if your cuts are closer to the center. Now I'm gonna start with my center and then I'm going to do the method that I call the next one, which means I'm going to start here where you can start wherever. It's just when you go to, to add your next piece, you're going to go to the next one. So I'll start here, then it'll go here, 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 and it'll just kind of zigzag all the way around. I just find it's easier because if I just did the six on the inside and try to remember where all the 12 are on the outside, sometimes I skip one. I don't know why that is probably because the um, inside deco mesh kind of conceals some locations on pipe cleaners I might miss. So what you're going to do is you're just going to picture a invisible line right here up the center. You're going to take and you're just going to pull that deco mesh towards you in about half inch increments, which means don't put your fingers way out here. Just kind of do what is natural to pull that towards you. I am taking the finished edge. I'm laying that finished edge right towards the center. We're going to give it a handful of twists just to make sure it will not come undone. Then I'm going to cut my pipe cleaner right where I finished twisting it. Dispose of the other two. We're going to tuck this one down on the inside and we're ready to go with the next one. 
So same method. I try sometimes to put the tighter ones to the inside because um, they'll just lay more flat when you put other ones on top of it. Again, we're going to do the same method. We're just going to pull it towards us. This is known as the ruffle method. Other people call it the scrunch or bow tie method because it looks like a bow tie or we're scrunching that together as we go to pull it up. I'm going to lay this one directly on top of the other. Just two complete twists is all that's required. And then from here, I'm going to fold the very edges down. But what I want is underneath here, how we have this gap. I want to make sure that that is going completely underneath the bot or the top part. And then I'm going to do the same at the bottom. I'm just going to lift and make sure that comes underneath that piece and then tuck those little frayed, those are the edges, the cut edges where it's likely to fray. And then I'm going to just move my pipe cleaner over so it does not get in the way of the next piece. Now on this next piece, because it doesn't have one in the middle, I'm going to take and do the same thing. I'm going to gently fold over one of my edges. I'm going to do the same on the top part of that ruffle so that we fill that gap. And as you can see, this one is now ready to have a piece of deco mesh laid directly on top. So same process all the way through all 18. So cutting these at 20 inch pieces, 18 of them will use up exactly one roll of deco mesh, which is very um, economical for us because it means we don't have any leftovers. Again, pushing these towards the side. I'm going to kind of have to push these back because I've got to get that center one in. So we're going to go with a tighter curl. This one is a little bit closer to the inside, so it really wants to fight me on um, laying flat. It wants to curl up on itself, and that's why using these to the center is really beneficial because now it's even though it wants to curl, it's going to be laying flat because the other two pieces are going to go directly on top. Tucking that down from here, we just need to pull this back so that we can tuck underneath and take the existing piece to the left and make sure it lays directly on top. Okay, here we're ready for that other piece that's going to come in here and we're going to be ready to go. Oh, okay, Elizabeth. She said, I saw the peacock in the background. Yeah, and it's so funny because sometimes you can do all the things correctly and then when you go to hit live, it just reverts back to whatever you had previously, which was the last design we did in this group. So go figure. There's probably more updates coming. It'd be nice if Facebook, like all updates, you know, even Apple, it kind of lets you know what's coming. So you know what to prepare for. Facebook just makes the changes and then <laughs> unexpected surprise. So as we're connecting the two, remember on that outside piece, we want to make sure that we have a little spacer so that we can get that filled. And now you're going to see me start to go a little bit quicker because we've done all the explanation on how to make the ruffles, how to lay the ruffles. And we're just going to start knocking this out much quicker. Okay, always folding the edges, move the pipe cleaners over. I'm going to leave these ones back because we've got to get our centerpiece in. Sometimes if these ones get in the way, just move them all to the right. That way, your one piece, you don't have to worry about this, like, getting stuck in the deco mesh piece that you're getting ready to lay. Again, another tight end, but using these on the center ones just really, really helps. 
and you could just do all six on the inside and then come back and do all the outside. There is no preferred method. It's honestly whatever works for you. Tucking that back in, we need to make that adjustment to get that under the one that we just put in to the left. And then we're ready to go with the right piece. So I always refer to it as the center, the left, and the right. That's exactly what I'm referring to when I say that. Okay. So I just find if you just take your time and lay that in, it'll just make the rest of the design process for you go so much easier. And then we're connecting the next section. So I'm preparing this one for the piece that's gonna come in and lay right on top. And if you guys haven't seen the previous post, I am in the process of designing the 2024 Tropical Reef. So I shared with you the designs from the last three years I've been doing these to see, hey, in a it's sometimes it's so hard to find just the right florals i had that advantage when i lived in california that i could just go to shinoda and they had a massive um, design center so you could literally find anything you wanted in any color you wanted and i don't have that now until i make my trek to go back to california And it's during the week, just kind of stop over there and I can grab some florals. Okay, getting ready to add this one to the outside. So I have not done one with the Bird of Paradise and I would like to introduce that. They're always usually grapevines. I have not done a tropical deco mesh yet. Okay, everything, push it to the left. Prep this next section by getting one over and one below. Let's make sure our ends here. So as you can see, I have a direct line of sight all the way around the outside edge in which to add our ribbon tails to having a more flat wreath um, just allows me to not have to compress the sign too much. I don't have to fight the deco mesh trying to get a bow in. Same thing, move to the left. And I, here's a word of caution to you. When you're working with the jute burlap mesh, um, the little fibers are going to go everywhere. So if you're wearing something like I am, I have um, a black knit um, long sleeve on, those little fibers are just going to get super messy. It'll look like cat hair or dog hair, but it's actually just those little jute fibers from the mesh. Okay, see how we have this? We wanna make sure that we're removing any frays through the process if we can. And we're trying really hard not to disturb the mesh once we get it inside. That's the key to curbing the frays 
and a jute mesh uh, wreath is going to have those little frays. So for maintenance purposes, if you notice, you know, you've got a little uh, piece of fiber hanging off or a little piece of jute, just trim it with the scissors. And then that's how you keep everything looking good. Okay. I've got about four pieces left. I always like to just kind of flick that up. We've got that transition piece and I kind of forgot to take the time to make sure we've got a good overlap. Okay, two to the side. Make sure we've got it under on both ends, which we do. Ready to put in our last center. And then we just have the two outside pieces. Okay. Here's right in the center. And you can see just by adding those six in the center, we pretty much filled the center section. So we no longer have a hole in the inside of our wreath any longer. Tuck that back down. I'm gonna unfluff this, lay it over the top, push that back under. And then these last two are gonna be the challenge ones because we're running out of space because we're starting to meet where we started. But you can squeeze them in. here and over two twists I'm going to fold my ends move the pipe cleaners to the left I'm gonna make sure these are lining up right over that outside piece so we can squeeze this last one in Now we are ready to start adding our ribbon tails to the outside. <clears throat> now that we have all these ready, I find it's easier if you just kind of have everything prepped and ready to go. So I find putting them in an up and down position is helpful. Remember we just have the 12 to the outside. Okay, our line of sight is clear. The combination that we're doing on this one is we are pairing the inch and a half Swiss dot cut to 19 inch pieces with the two and a half inch black, tan, and white dotted line ribbon, which is cut to 14 inches. Again, the inch and a half black and tan diagonal plaid is cut to 19 inches and then the black and white gingham edge with the black stripe two and a half inches is cut to 14 inch pieces so we're going to be alternating these all the way around they're already dovetail cut so i just fold them in half so that i can find the midway point so that i can gather right up the middle I can lay this right on the inside, one twist. The way that the ribbon goes in is it's kind of like a little concave, like a scoop. You wanna take your fingers and push up and out so that they now fan outward. The inch and a half, you're gonna bring the dovetailed edges together. They're gonna to go up about two inches. You're gonna gather. You're gonna place that right on the inside of your pipe cleaner on top of the two and a half inch. 
and you're just going to give it some final twists. Again, cutting off the pipe cleaner right where we finished twisting. You're gonna take this little edge. You're gonna tuck that edge all the way behind that loop. You're gonna open the loop on the inch and a half. You are going to right side the left portion of your ribbon so that you have both right sides out. And you're just gonna position them so that you can see both of the ribbons. Okay, we're doing the same for the second one. Folding in half, gather up the middle. I'm gonna tuck this behind my pipe cleaner. One twist, pop it out. Take the inch and a half, dovetail edges together, two inches from the top, pinch together. Lay that right inside your pipe cleaner. Give it a, I usually do four or five twists. Cut off what is not twisted. Wrap the back behind your loop. Open the loop. Right side your left portion of your ribbon. And then just make sure hey, I can see all the ribbon pieces that you just pushed in. And I'm gonna go with the Swiss dot being more predominant. So if it needs to lay over anything, I want that to be the one that's gonna lay on top of. So we're just gonna do this all the way around. Okay, popping. Swiss dot. Two inches, gather, lay it right on the inside. Couple of twists, cut the ends off, tuck this behind. We're gonna open the top. We're gonna right side this piece. And again, like I said, because I want that to be more predominant, I'm going to let this one kind of cover the top. But as you can see, that is my preferred look all the way around. It's just having that Swiss dot always sit on top because that is where my inspiration came from for the sign. I was like black, white, and tan. All neutrals that's nice because it can go on a white door can go on a black door it can go on a red door it can go on a wood door a lot of different color options do you guys have any questions that I can answer for you while I'm just sitting here putting the rest of our ribbon tails and I call these half bows because there's only one loop. I feel like a bow should be two loops and at least two tails. Hi, Mary Carol. Um, yeah, Pam. Um, so Pam, I only cut the first pipe cleaner, just the ones on the inside. So I have six on the inside. I only cut the, when I'm laying the deco mesh in just the six, cause the sign is a 12 inch sign. So it's really gonna take up. And I did this wrong. I, I moved my pipe cleaner, I have the wrong pipe cleaner. Or not the wrong pipe cleaner, I have the wrong ribbon. So I have to undo this. We're gonna pop this one out. Pop it in here, which is where it should be. I was like, wait a minute. How did I do that? Around the back. Open. Open. And then we'll go ahead and tuck this one in. Because this one was hiding under the wreath. So I didn't catch it. And I was just grabbing. We 
can definitely do that. So back to Rob, uh, Pam's question. So I only cut the inside six because our sign is so big. And then as we're adding our ribbon tails and half bows to these, I am just removing now the outside 12 that is holding. And Mary Carol, this will go on replay as soon as we finish. So you'll be able to rewind it all the way to the beginning and see what we did. So what designs would you guys love to see? What have you always wanted to make, but you lack a tutorial so that you can follow along to figure out how to do that? I love trying to find ideas or even sometimes when people do their tutorials, they don't explain what they're doing so that you have no idea how to go through the process of recreating that look on your own, even though you can buy all the same stuff. Okay. Now we know that the dotted line goes with the dots. Okay, we're opening this, right siding this around, making sure. I always like to pull the inch and a half on top of the two and a half inch. And I'm just tucking these behind those pipe cleaners. Hi, Mary, welcome. Um, Elizabeth, they do but they're so slow in their response. Um, I would just honestly, especially with florals, man, I prefer to be there to look at them, to touch them. Cause sometimes the quality, well, it shouldn't matter. The quality is always like top notch, but, um, I just like to be able to physically look at my florals unless it's florals that I have purchased in the past and I'm just making a second or third purchase of something like fillers or greenery. I generally don't worry about because those are going to be a base or they're going to be under the design. So I don't necessarily really have to worry about what that's going to look like. Under. So if your deco mesh ruffles are in the way, just tuck them back so that you have access to where you need to put that ribbon. Right on top, one twist, pop it, put your ribbon tails in, gather, place this right on the inside, couple twists, Trim those off, wrap them behind, open it, and we're going to right side those. Again, putting the inch and a half on top, unless it's the polka dot one. I think we have three sets left. And then I've been trying to decide. I'm kind of leaning towards a top bow. And I'll show you the sign here in a minute, as soon as we get all the ribbon in. Okay. Under. Okay, one of each remains.
it's kind of hard when you're like trying to envision, okay, you're looking at this the way I am. And then you're like, hmm, I wonder what kind of sign is going to go in the middle. Where are you going to put a bow? You know, if the whole inside portion is going to be, um, what's a sign? So the 12 inch signs really help in utilizing space so that you don't really have to think, okay, you know, do I add additional ribbon to the outside? You know, do I frame the sign with a ribbon, adding more ribbon all the way around? Here's our last one. Pop that this final squish it together twist 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 so now we've removed all the pipe cleaners that we started with or if you were doing this on a wire wreath form it just depends on if you like your tinsel ties you can have the option of leaving them on or you can take them off it is entirely up to you. Okay. Popping. So there is the design. Now, when I grab the sign and place the sign right in the center, now you pretty much have an everyday wreath. So this is what I'm saying. I have a lot of real estate up here where there's nothing. If I put the bow on the bottom, it's going to completely cover the polka dot. And I kind of really like that because that was where I kind of went with the inspiration. So I think we're going to put the bow up here and we're going to angle the tails to kind of come down off the side. It's been a while since I did that. So let's build the bow first. The sign is from Craft Outlet. So we're going to grab all of our ribbon. I'm going to use the bow dabra and we are going to do the black on the base because our mesh is beige so it'll pair really well um then if we kind of mix and match all of our ribbons kind of really wanted this to the outside um, but i think we'll just do this look because these will be close enough to the top um so that's the way they're actually going to go into my bow dabra so we are going to start with the black and white we're always going to start with a dovetailed edge which is just bring your wired edges together you're going to cut from the fold to the wired point Destin start is like you can change where you start, but your destination where you end will always be the same. How high up you come on this ribbon determines how deep of that V do you want to see come into your ribbon. There's some people who do it really shallow. I kind of like it to be a little bit more pronounced. We are going to measure off 10 inches. And then we are going to gather here. We're going to twist and then we're going to place that inside the bodabra. So the twist part went right in the center. Now, as I bring this ribbon up and over, I'm just going to do a simple twist, place that back on the inside, and then I'm going to take my bodabra, line it up on the 10 inch line so that when I pull this out, I want to see it end at five and a half inches. So same thing, up and around, kind of guess, slide it down, line it up, stretch it out just to verify. And then now we're going to add that tail length of 10 inches back here. We're going to dovetail the end again. And we've got our first one in. 
This is going to yield an 11 inch diameter bow based on the loop um, length. So if you want a true 11 inch, I'm still trying to find my, my pin. I just had it. Um, if you want true 11 inches all the way around, then you're just gonna cut your tails to end at the loop length. But I feel like that's just way too short. That one went to the floor. My um, pins are a little too long. So I like to just trim the ends off so that I'm not fighting an inch and a half to get all the way through those layers of ribbon. So again, there's the pin. Dovetail the end. Just like so. This time we're doing nine and a half inches. So each time we're adding another ribbon on the tail length, we're gonna come down by a half an inch. <clears throat> now on the loop, it's gonna seem like, you know, we're doing the same thing, but there's a slight variation when we get to the middle two. So this one we want at five inches. Measure the opposite. Line it up, stretch it out, make any adjustments, and then get your tail length complete. Dovetail the end again. And there you have it for that one. And so will the fourth ribbon, not the tail length, but the loop length. So this one's going to be nine inches for the tail. We gather, twist, place it on the inside. We're going to go up and over the top, bring it back, verify the length is four and a half inches. Do the same on the other side. Line it up, stretch it out, and then whoop, get those two nine inches. And I found that pin now, finally. <clears throat> Enter my pipe cleaner. But that's okay. Okay, now we're doing black and tan. <clears throat> this one is going to be eight and a half inch tail. This one's going to be the same four and a half inches, the loop size. These are the only two that are the same. So eight and a half inches, twist, place it on the inside. Since we already have the bottom ones measured at four and a half inches, all we have to do is put your fingers inside and pull the top one to make sure that they are equal. But we still need to bring it back to the 10 inch line to make sure we know where the eight and a half inch line is. Okay, those ones are in. And now we're to our Swiss dot. This one's going to be an eight inch tail with a four inch loop, which means line it up, gather at your eight inches, twist, place that on the inside. We're gonna go up and around, bring it back to the 10. Verify it's at four inches. Do the same on the other side. 
we're at four inches. And then this back out to eight. Dovetail the end. There we go. That one is done. And our final ribbon is the plaid, diagonal plaid. So this one is going to be a seven and a half inch tail with a three and a half inch loop. So seven and a half inches, gather, twist, place that on the inside, up and around, line it up, make sure it's at three and a half inches. Do the same on the other side. I think it's gonna be a little long. Yeah. <clears throat> and then this seven and a half. Dovetail your end. And you are done with loading your bow dabber with all of your ribbon materials. So I am going to take a pipe cleaner, I'm going to prep it in a U shape just so it's easier to grab. I'm going to pick up both the top stack and the bottom stack and compress as I'm lifting it up. I'm just going to drop my pipe cleaner directly over the inside, hold it at the bottom, and then twist. And then we're going to get our fluff board ready, and we're going to be fluffing this for that top look on that bow. So this is a 24 by 24 by one inch thick piece of pre-cut lumber. I just covered it with the uh, non-stick uh, flooring strips, added an inch and a half to two inch C hook. So now when I come in with my pipe cleaner, I'm just gonna loop that directly around that C hook. There we go. So that it keeps my bow from sliding left or right off the board. So because this is going to be a top bow and we don't want the tails hanging down because if we lined up our sign and we made the tails hung, uh, hang down, the longest tail is going to impact our sign. So we kind of want it a little bit off the side. So with that, we're just gonna do that standard. We need to know where all of our tails and loops are. So we're just gonna separate. So we start at the bottom. <coughs> we take the tail, move the tail to one side, loop to the opposite. Go to the other side of your stack. Find the exact same ribbon and go opposite. So I have my loop here going to the left and now my tail is going to the right so that the loops are opposite of the tails. Now as I bring down the next one, we're going to do opposite. So I'm bringing the tail out to the right, loop out to the left, find the same ribbon on the other side, and do the exact same thing so that you have opposites on either side. But now what you'll notice <clears throat> is that we're alternating colors from the loops and the tails. Okay. Now the next one, if we brought it down, we're going to have black on top of black. So I'm going to just follow the same with the beige and I'm going loop to the left, tail to the right. Whatever you do on the top stack, you want to do opposite on the bottom. Did I skip one? Oh, we've got it here. So we want loop here. Sorry, I grabbed the wrong tail. I grabbed the wrong tail. <clears throat> tail here, loop here. Opposite, we're moving loop out, tail here. Now we're gonna follow the black and white pattern. So the next ribbon we bring down, 
<clears throat> is going to be that black and tan stripe out to the side. Over here, we're going to do opposites. Okay, it's following that. This is following this. Now, as we get ready to pull the next one down, I don't want black and white on top of black and white, so I'm going to follow the, the black and tan. Okay, over here, we're going to do the opposite. Let's see how these got mixed up. There we go. And then the top is going to follow this side. It's following the black and white stripe. And then from here, opposites. So if I grab these, these are my tails. Everything is flat. Nothing is fluffed. From here, you're going to take the top two. You're just going to lift and fluff those bows out. We don't want them like flat. I've seen this on a wreath before where I'm like, but we had wire ribbon <laughs> put in there for a reason so that you can make a really pretty loop. And then we've got the top two up. Ignore the tails for now. From here, decide what do you want to see come in between these. Do you want to see this ribbon or would you rather see this ribbon inside? I like it a little bit to the outside. So I'm going to pull those just slightly off, but here we're going to go opposite so that we have a full bow forming. Okay. At the bottom now, I want to see, there we go. They're really stubborn. They want to weave their way back in. We're going to open these two, kind of line them up where you want them to be. I kind of like the tan between the two black ribbons and then this black and white kind of in between these two. So you really want to fluff these. You really want some separation there. Okay. And then from here, we're going to put that curl back into the ribbon. So you're just going to run it through your fingers all the way down. Find all of them and just run them through your finger. They kind of start to look like little spider legs. It's a little harder as you get to the bottom because they're laying on a flat surface, but you can still get it to look pretty. And then you kind of want to just define your presentation part. You know, what do you want to see where? You can mix them up. You can have some of your tails come in here. Based on this design, I need to know where my tails are so that when we get ready to put this on the wreath, what we're hoping for is that these tails are going to go down the side like they kind of are here. So that when I take these and lay this underneath, I kind of get a pre prelim of roughly what it's going to look like. So that's how it's going to sit on my wreath. So if I wanted to do it at the top, you could do the top, but see how now it kind of eats away at that black and white polka dot. You don't see it as much. And if we were doing a bottom bow, we would pull all the tails down anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one off. The opposite way I put it on. There we go. I'm going to move this out of the way, bring our wreath back. We're going to prep our sign. So on this sign, it comes with a top and bottom hole already included. You can use a pipe cleaner or you can use floral wire. Both will work. I just prefer the floral wire when going through the jute. It's a little stiffer. So I'm just going to pull these out. And then I'm going to add these to my sign to get this wired up. I've already added a business card to the back so that the client, if they want another one, 
knows who they purchased from. Okay, we're gonna make this as even as we can. And then what we want to do is as we're twisting that wire, we're twisting it over the hole. Because it's building up a little, um, a little base on that. So it doesn't look like a spinner. You know what spinners look like. That's when you would put your wire here and pull it out to the side so that it looks like a spinner. Plus you can see the wire. If we do it this way, we can better conceal what it looks like and also give it a base to sit on when we attach our sign. So when bringing this over, remember those six pipe cleaners we pulled off on the inside? We're gonna find two of them. So we should have one. Here's one right here. We're gonna use this location and then the one directly opposite to go ahead and attach our sign. So I'm gonna simply take my floral wire I'm going to weave that so that we have one on either side of the frame. Grab the other side. And we're going to go directly opposite. And we are going to line this up. I'm just going to pull some of this mesh out of the way. I'm going to pull that up. Do just one twist because if I need to adjust that sign, it's so much easier to do that. Here's where my other pipe cleaner is. I'm going to line that one up. It's just handy if you build the wreath the same way. You kind of know where all your pipe cleaners are going to line up. Even if you cut them off, then you can't see them anymore. Okay. So I'm going to pull this one up. I'm not going to pull it all the way down to the frame because we don't want to compress our mesh, even though it looks like that's what we did right now. I'm going to make sure that my loops are out of the way first. All the way through. And then right here, from about here down, I want to take the edge of this mesh. Remember, this is our ruffles. We're just going to lift the edges of our mesh so that we have a nice little feathering effect going on here. You, sir, need to go underneath. Sometimes all the mesh wants to come out like those interior pieces we had going on. We don't want those. Okay. All the way around. Making sure we have those cute little fluffy little ridges all the way around. Okay, right here, I'm gonna kinda just tuck these ones down underneath so that this does not push my bow up unnaturally so that I have this weird funky lift under there. We're going to line up our bow right here, right over this portion. So knowing where our tails are, I think I wanted it this way. So there's my ribbon tails. I am just going to follow those straight down right where my floral wire went. I've got one in. And I've got to work through the other side. And I got to make sure I get it on the opposite side of the frame. Cleaners, they get stuck on all those little nuances in that burlap. They just want to kind of pick up all those threads as they go down. And so now we just kind of have the ribbon tails now framing our sign 
just like so, just like that. And then I want to adjust. Some of these are a little too fluffy for me. So what I can do is go on the inside and I can kind of pull these back through so they're not out quite so much because I want them just grazing the top of that sign just like that like this one is way too fluffy so you're gonna see me pull those in so I can actually grab them from the underside add it the handoff just didn't hand off accurately enough. Same thing here. We'll do that nifty handoff. Because I want this one down just a little bit. Just because I want a softer look. I don't want quite so deck, quite so much deco mesh here on the outside. And I'm trying to keep the edges and find it. I'm trying to grab this edge that I have here with so much mesh already underneath. There we go so that I can pull these up. I kind of have a little softer look. I had it and then I let it go. Same thing here. Tuck these in because I pulled way too much out. And sometimes if you feel like, oh, it would probably be easier if I just pulled the sign out, then go ahead and pull the sign out and just go back in and redress all the issues that you have. So I'm trying to pull the edges in so that we have these little fluffy pieces here. Last one, this will go in right about here. And then just <clears throat> re-fluff up all your tails, readjust anything you need because we've been messing with all this stuff on the outside. Just like that. I want all my black and white polka dot to be on the outside. So I'm going to make all of those adjustments. Kind of tuck these two in a little bit here. Pull these back up to the top. It just makes it easier if I can do it here rather than trying to do it on the board. Up, up, up bring all of your tails. So this is what we have. This is what we can see. And I know it's hard to see the whole thing. Let's put it on the door so you can see it. I'm going to go ahead and pivot you up. I'm trying to make sure we can get the whole door in. I'm going to take this one off. We're going to tuck this one up. really nice on the black door and then you're gonna do all the things see what I'm saying it looks like I was out petting the dogs although I don't have dogs so just make sure all of your ribbon tails are out precise straight points make sure your wreath is straight with your door let's get a I think that's there. There we go. Let's 
separate whatever you need to separate all the way around so you have a fabulous look on your door. What do you guys think? That is I like this right over here. Just like that. Okay. Did I just make it weird? No. There we go. Let me tuck this one in. Okay. Now we can see the loops. There we go. So that is a wreath that you can put on your door that is perfect for every day. I can actually pull that one around. So I was like, wow, what is that big black tail? It was our sides that should have been over, you know, like here's our sides, making sure that those are complete. But there it is, a wreath that is perfect for switching out between all of the holidays. And that works really, really good for summertime, fall, transitioning into all the spring stuff. If you don't have a specific springtime wreath, this is what goes in between all the seasonal changes. So do you guys have any questions at all? Thanks, Pam. Thanks, Linda. Jones is awesome cat. Even if I have to watch catch or watch on catch up on YouTube, no worries. It'll all go right to replay here as soon as I go ahead and hit the end button. Um, coming in like a donkey's tail. I love your analogies. Always behind. No, you're not. You're always right on time. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you have a great weekend. I've got lots of new designs coming for you next week that, um, there's a couple that I have not ever done on a Facebook live in a public group. So you're going to see some of the designs that I had early on when I first started, um, and we're going to give them a new twist, add a little bit of life to them, and I hope you enjoy these designs. So join me next week and make sure that you are liking and following the page. Have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now, everyone.